Okay, so the charcoal's made and it looks good, but it's not ready for adding to the soil just yet. The next step is to grind it down to the right size. I did consider a pair of rollers, but that's actually fairly complicated because the rollers have to go in opposite directions and the gap between them might need to be adjustable. Also, I suspect rollers would squash the charcoal, something I'd rather avoid. So I looked at this thing for a while instead. I found it on the market. I think it's for chopping parsley. A sharp knife works far better for that job though, of course. But the principle of it is very interesting. There's just one spindle with blades attached and the blades run through a comb or a grid. Would this work for charcoal? Perhaps. I had a go at making my own version. This is my comb. The slots are six millimeters wide. And here's my version of the blade. Charcoal is very brittle. My thought was that it would be best if I could break it with teeth rather than try to cut it. I tried to design the teeth so that they would engage progressively, not all at the same time. That was an interesting drawing challenge in itself. The spaces are just plywood discs from a previous project. Unfortunately though these slots in the comb were just too tight and it didn't work. So I had to make another one with gaps 7 millimeters wide. and that sort of worked. I didn't have a handle on the spindle, so it was hard going, but the principle seems mm. to be okay. Obviously I needed to give the whole thing some more support and I found help to be able to reverse the direction. So I went back to the drawing board and the plasma cutter and cut double-sided blades, which Batman might be proud of. <laughs> and another comb, this time with eight millimeter gaps. And put it all back together again. For something with such a simple objective, this has turned out to be a fairly complicated challenge.
but it worked quite well at this stage, so I knew I was on the right track. I realised though that turning the handle was uh, going to be a bit slow and quite a lot of hard work, so I set out to motorise it. I found a pulley that might work, but it had a weird shaped hole in the middle. I need a square hole for the shaft I'm using, so I set up the plasma cutter to cut one out for me. I drew the correct size square, but unfortunately I programmed the machine to cut on the outside of the line instead of the inside, so it ended up too big. My fault entirely, but it will still do, I think. What size motor do I need? I have no idea. Of course, I can't just go buy a motor and hope it will work. They're way too expensive for that. So I looked around to see what I already have. I could perhaps have connected it up to the pillar drill somehow. <laughs> Probably, maybe. But I chose my lathe instead. I don't have the right size belt for this at all and you wouldn't want to have your fingers anywhere near this thing now that it's motorized and the switch is not in a good position. <laughs> So lots more work could be done on this, but it does work and it does work quite well. And it turns this sort of charcoal into this sort of charcoal. How exciting. <laughs>